What if we told you that while the world's attention is fixated on the conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East, the next global showdown is quietly brewing in North Korea? With Kim Jong-un's recent bold moves, it's time we ask ourselves, is he gearing up for war? Lately, Kim Jong-un's been breaking old North Korean rules like they're made of glass, saying South Korea is their forever enemy and dropping hints about war. But why the sudden change, and what does it mean for the world's safety? With tensions rising and missile tests keeping us on edge, we're all wondering if the North Korean leader is truly gearing up for something massive, or is there more to his moves than we realize? Join us as we dig deep into the core of North Korea's secret government, figuring out what Kim Jong-un is doing, why he's doing it, and looking at what his actions might mean. For many years, both North and South Korea have claimed to be part of the same family, aiming for a peaceful reunion. But since 1953, when the Korean War ceased with an armistice, the two sides have been separated, technically still at war. Now, Kim Jong-un is changing the narrative. Edward Howell, a politics lecturer at the University of Oxford, emphasizes that Kim Jong-un perceives South Korea not as another part of Korea, but as a completely separate foreign entity. This reclassification of South Korea as an adversary state, experts explain, provides Kim justification for continually expanding his nuclear and missile arsenal. This allows him to exert pressure on Seoul, which has taken a tougher stance against Pyongyang under President Yoon suk yeol Talk about a narrative shift. Despite facing severe international sanctions, Kim has persisted in enhancing his arsenal in recent years. His focus has been on developing weapons capable of targeting not only South Korea and Japan, but also territories like Guam and the mainland United States. He views these capabilities as crucial for preventing potential attacks and ensuring the survival of his regime. Since 2022, Kim has emphasized that the main purpose of his nuclear arsenal is to prevent war. However, he has also suggested the potential use of nuclear weapons to defend North Korea's fundamental interests against threats. How confusing! Kim has grown increasingly concerned about the strengthening relationship between the United States and South Korea. Yoon and Biden have stepped up in their country's defense plans and coordination in response to North Korea's threats and weapons advances. This includes expanding joint military exercises and security cooperation with Japan, which Kim perceives as a direct challenge to his government. According to Professor Wan Gon Park, from Iwa Women's University in Seoul, the progress made by South Korea and the United States in terms of strengthening prevention is a significant source of frustration for Kim Jong-un. Kim has expressed his concerns openly. He recently remarked that the instability in the region is escalating due to the U.S.-led escalation of military tensions. Despite Pyongyang's reluctance to war, Kim emphasized, that the risk of its outbreak has significantly intensified. But wait, there's more. Kim's shift in policy towards South Korea may also stem from his belief that negotiations with the U.S. are no longer a feasible path to achieving North Korea's objectives of nuclear recognition and sanctions relief. According to the U.S., Pyongyang has rejected Washington's attempts at a dialogue following a failed 2019 summit between Kim and then-U.S. President Trump. Here's a twist, though. Some experts suggest that Kim views abandoning reunification not as a step towards war, but as a necessary defensive measure. Kim himself has stated that North Korea is strengthening itself not for an offensive reunification, but for legitimate self-defense. Yul Chul Lim from IFES notes that Kim fears North Korea's absorption by the South and believes that normalizing relations requires economic development, given the North's economic inferiority. Instead of focusing on reunification talks, Kim prioritizes building up his arsenal and economy, seeking new economic partners for growth. 
Contrary to expectations, U.S. officials state that they haven't observed signs of Kim preparing for an attack on South Korea or a broader nuclear provocation. Some analysts also speculate that North Korea's public statements suggest a departure from its reunification policy in favor of peace on the peninsula. Intriguing, right? A senior defense official emphasizes that Kim's primary concern is the survival of his regime, a strategic priority for his family since the Korean War. The North Korean leader may also feel more assured about his arsenal and choices as he observes the changing global landscape. From his perspective, experts suggest that Kim sees a weakening U.S. influence being tested in conflicts like those in Ukraine and the Middle East. On the other hand, he sees China rising in power, backed by an alliance of nations which includes Russia and Iran, all challenging Western interests. Rachel Min Young Lee from the Stimson Center think tank in Washington highlights Kim's growing confidence. It's not only about the U.S.-China and U.S.-Russia divide, but also about a world where U.S. leadership is considerably weakened, and there are few consequences for aggressive actions quite strategic indeed. According to Lee, Kim's change in approach towards South Korea signals a broader shift in foreign policy. He's moving away from seeking normalization with the United States through denuclearization and turning towards China and Russia instead. This shift was significantly boosted in September when Vladimir Putin hosted Kim for a rare overseas trip to Russia. Western officials speculate that Putin's motives were driven by the need to strengthen his position in the conflict with Ukraine. Since then, Russia has reportedly used North Korean supplied short-range ballistic missiles in the conflict, a move criticized by the White House as a concerning escalation of Pyongyang support. Analysts believe that Russia may have reciprocated with aid for North Korea's spy satellite program. Increased cooperation with Moscow could potentially help Kim address North Korea's chronic food and fuel shortages and strengthen its economy. China, North Korea's primary economic supporter, remains cautious of any actions by Pyongyang that could destabilize the region or draw more U.S. forces. Despite tensions with Washington, Beijing has blocked U.S.-backed efforts in the United Nations Security Council to condemn North Korea. Additionally, China intends to maintain engagement with Pyongyang, especially as it strengthens ties with Moscow. Experts caution that North Korea's escalation of tensions is expected to continue this year as Washington speeds up drills and cooperation with its regional partners to defeat Kim. The question of how to reduce these tensions is up for debate. Some policy experts believe that displaying strength is the best way to stop North Korean aggression. On the other hand, others argue that the alliance must find ways to minimize the perceived threat to Kim's government, thus preventing Pyongyang from getting closer to Moscow and Beijing. Lim, based in Seoul, points out that Kim Jong-un is cautious of potential provocations by South Korean military during joint exercises. He warns that failure to de-escalate threats during these drills could lead to military conflicts on the Korean Peninsula. Lee in Washington also agrees that stating a more confident Kim might be inclined to take military action against perceived threats, such as joint U.S.-South Korea military exercises. Looking ahead, Kim will also closely monitor the upcoming presidential elections as Trump seeks re-election. However, the question remains uncertain as to whether Kim would be open to engaging with the former president again if he were to be re-elected. Nevertheless, experts speculate that Kim might view a re-elected Trump optimistically. Trump is known for his doubts about international alliances, which could lead to a reduction in America's security cooperation with South Korea and Japan. This prospect might appeal to Kim as it could potentially weaken the pressure on North Korea. Moreover, there is also a possibility that Kim could attempt to influence the dynamics of the election through forceful action. One potential scenario could involve Pyongyang conducting its seventh nuclear test, marking the first such test since 2017, as suggested by Park from Iwa Women's University. 
Park suggests that a seventh nuclear test could provide Trump with an opportunity to criticize the Biden administration's approach to handling North Korea, thereby influencing the political landscape. Kim Jong-un's recent maneuvers have set the stage for a tense and uncertain future. From shifting alliances to nuclear ambitions, the stakes have never been higher. But amidst the uncertainty, one fact remains. North Korea's unpredictability keeps the world on edge. Despite significant policy shifts, Kim's next move remains anyone's guess. What do you think will be the next major development in North Korea's relations with the international community? How can other world leaders work to bring peace to the Korean Peninsula? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, push the bell icon, and subscribe for the latest global updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.